This is part three of the chapter two lecture notes. We had left off <clears throat> with hydrogen bonding. It's important for you to understand that first we learned about ionic bonding. Ionic bonds form um, compounds like sodium chloride. Okay, so that's two atoms chemically um, bonded together, sodium and chlorine form sodium chloride. And then you have covalent bonding, which forms other molecules like um, hydrogen is two atoms of hydrogen uh, chemically bonded together. Carbon dioxide is one carbon and two oxygen atoms chemically bonded together. Um, so what ionic and covalent bonding is doing is, is uh, attract, it's like a strong attraction of atoms to each other and it's forming compounds and molecules. But hydrogen bonding is weak attractions between molecules. So the water molecule is already formed and the bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen, the two hydrogens and the oxygen that forms the water molecule um, <clears throat> is a nonpolar, they are nonpolar covalent bonds. But what you're seeing with hydrogen bonding is an attraction between a, one water molecule and another water molecule. Um, and that is a, a weak bond and it's caused because one end of the water molecule is slightly positive, the hydrogen end is slightly positive, and then the other end of the water molecule is slightly negative. So because of these slight opposite charges, the molecules are attracted to each other weakly, I mean, in, in a weak attraction, a weak chemical attraction. So that's what hydrogen bonding is. And um, there's other examples of it, but the most important example for us is um, the bond between water molecules because it gives water um, these amazing properties that, um, is, is actually the reason that our bodies are composed of the majority of our body is water is because of all these properties that water has due to the fact that water is polar and due to the hydrogen bonding between uh, water molecules. So one thing that the hydrogen bonding does is it creates surface tension. Um, you've probably seen um, what what happens with surface tension is like on the surface of a pond or a lake or some body of water, um, there is a tension between the water molecules on the surface. So they kind of resist um, evaporating from the surface of the water. <clears throat> and it's not listing all the other properties. Okay, so um, this enables uh, small insects like spiders to walk across the surface of the water. Um, you know, obviously humans are too heavy to do that, but, but you know, um, certain insects can do it. And um, <clears throat> there are other things that are special about water. Like for one thing is the fact that our bodies are, are so much composed of water helps to keep our body temperature um, very um, stable because it takes a lot of energy to change the temperature of water. So if we're mostly made of water, then, and it takes a lot of energy to change the temperature, then, then all that water that um, is inside of us helps to keep our body temperature stable. And there's other properties of water. Water is um, called the universal solvent because it is able to dissolve so many molecules and uh, compounds. Um, when we talk about all the chemical reactions that occur inside of our bodies and our cells, water is um, necessary to dissolve the compounds so that they can react with other compounds. So the chemical reactions that occur inside of our cells could not occur if it weren't for the fact that um, the inside of our cells is composed of water. So let's look at these questions. Number three, define chemical bond and identify several types of chemical bonds. Okay, so a chemical bond is an attraction between one atom and another atom. 
Um, it's it, they're not glued together. They're not physically, you know, um, attached, but they are so attracted to each other that they form a totally different chemical. Um, <clears throat> one type of chemical bond is an ionic bond, and that forms between ions of different charge because opposite charges attract. And then another type is a covalent bond, which forms when atoms share electrons in order to um, fill the outer electron shells or outer energy levels of each atom. And within the covalent bonding, um, there's polar and nonpolar covalent bonds. Let's move on to number four. Um, oxygen and neon are both gases at room temperature. Why does oxygen combine readily with other elements that neon does not? And now we know that neon is an, a noble gas. Its outer energy level or outer electron shell is filled with eight electrons. So um, since it is already stable, it has no reason to combine with any other atoms. Whereas oxygen was one of our examples and we found that oxygen had only six electrons in its outer shell and it needed two more to be stable. So it shares electrons with other atoms in order to gain those two electrons that it needs. <clears throat> and number five, which kind of bond holds atoms in a water molecule together? And that is the hydrogen bond. What attracts water molecules to each other? And that's the fact that the hydrogen end of the water molecule is slightly positive and the oxygen end is slightly negative. All right, chemical reactions. Just make sure for chemical reactions that you know that the substances before the arrow are called reactants and then the substances listed after the arrow in a chemical reaction are called the products. The term metabolism means all the chemical reactions in the body. Um, metabolism is a combination of catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism is all the breakdown reactions and anabolism is all of the synthesis or building reactions that build larger molecules. Um, make sure that you know for a chemical like um, C6H12O6, this is the second time we've seen this in, in just in this lecture, so make sure you memorize this. This is the formula for glucose and I'll try to write that without making too much of a mess. Glucose is also known as blood sugar. And our cells take glucose and break it down in, during cellular respiration and form ATP, um, energy. So make sure that you know this chemical formula and know what it means. What this means is that in, in one molecule of glucose, there are six atoms of carbon, 12 atoms of hydrogen, and six atoms of oxygen. All right, um, energy, make sure you know kinetic energy is the energy of motion and potential energy is stored energy. Um, there is potential energy stored in the bonds of a chemical like glucose. And all these chemical bonds, these um, covalent bonds that hold the carbon and hydrogen and oxygen atoms together, in all those chemical bonds, there is stored energy or potential energy. And then kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So when, when something moves, um, when molecules move or when we move our arms and our legs or when we move to breathe, you know, this is um, kinetic energy. Um, some, a lot of energy is released as heat every time a chemical reaction occurs. And these are the three types of chemical reactions. Make sure you know the, their names and what, what, uh, what they mean. A synthesis reaction means it's a reaction that builds a larger molecule. It takes smaller molecules and combines them into a larger molecule. A decomposition is a breakdown reaction. And then exchange reactions are reactions where nothing is built and nothing is broken down, but the atoms in the chemicals that are reacting, they rearrange themselves. So new chemicals are formed even though 
nothing is broken down um, and nothing is, is um, you know, built, is made larger. So this is an example of a decomposition reaction. It's really the only one you need to know. It's called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis, lysis means breakdown. So hydrolysis is when you have a, a large molecule and through adding, by adding water to that molecule, you break it down into smaller pieces. Um, you can see here that water, we know water is composed of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. So in this large compound that's just, a, just, a, B is not, it's just a symbol for a compound. It's not, it, A and B does not stand for any elements on the periodic table. But this large compound represented by A, B, part, there's a component called A and a component called B. All right, one of the hydrogens attaches to the A component, and then the oxygen and the other hydrogen attach to the B component. And what happens is they are split apart by this addition of water. They're split into chemical A and chemical B. So basically, chem, um, compound AB is broken up into A and B. And so that is a um, hydrolysis reaction, is the breakdown of a large molecule by adding water. And catabolism is defined as all of the breakdown reactions within our cells. Then the synthesis reactions are opposite, and the only synthesis reaction you really need to know is dehydration synthesis. It is exactly opposite of hydrolysis. So you can see that there is a chemical called A that has a hydrogen attached to it, a chemical called B that has an OH attached to it, which is an oxygen and a hydrogen. So those are removed, the A and the B are joined to make a larger molecule, and then the hydrogens and the oxygen are joined to make water. So instead of water being used to break apart a large molecule, now water is removed, and that's where the dehydration comes from. Water is removed in order to join two smaller molecules into a larger one. So just like catabolism, is the sum of all of the breakdown reactions. Anabolism is the sum of all of the synthesis reactions in our cells. And then we have exchange reactions where basically um, you can see there's chemical AB and then there's chemical CD and basically the A and the B switch um, where the, the A, the sorry, the B switches places with the D. The B and the D switch places. So um, you don't have any addition of a larger molecule. You don't have any breakdown, but you just have changing places, basically. <clears throat> we also have reactions that are called reversible reactions. And the way that we indicate that they're reversible is we put, make the arrow have, uh, make, make the arrow have, like it has an arrow at each end. Um, and this is, I don't know what's going on here, but it should look like this. Okay, it should be a line with an arrow going to the right, and then also an arrow going to the left. So just all this stuff here, just that, that shouldn't be there. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, what this is saying is that chemical A and chemical B can combine to form a larger molecule AB, and also, the reaction can go in the reverse direction. AB can break down into A plus B. So um, this, is, this is a reversible reaction. And when equilibrium has been reached, the forward reaction, the reaction that goes from the left to the right, occurs at the same rate as the reverse reaction. So in other words, you're getting the formation of AB equally as you are getting the formation of A and B. That's when equilibrium has been reached. Okay, <clears throat> all right. Using the rules for chemical notation, write the molecular formula for glucose. We went through that. I'm not going to go through that again. C6H12O6. Identify and describe the three types of chemical reactions. That's going to be exchange, dehydration synthesis, and hydrolysis. And then um, 
In living cells, glucose is converted into two, three carbon molecules. What type of reaction is this? Well, it's a breakdown, so it's going to be a hydrolysis reaction.